Welcome, one and all, down here, up there, high and away. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends, my countrymen. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and I... That's it. Yes. That's all the medicine you need. Alive and well. That's it. Alive and well. And I am back, baby. Now, you may have read in the New England Journal of Hot Goss that last week I had, I had the COVID. And I'm very grateful that I am fully vax and boosted, feeling fine, but still. Thank you, science. Thank you, science. But still, I gotta say, COVID is no fun. The first three days sucked. And by day six, I was testing negative. And now on day 12, I'm back with a serious head cold. So. Go figure. Unfortunately, not all is well in the kingdom of late night. My friend, Jimmy Kimmel, just announced that he has COVID now. Yeah, he says he's feeling fine. He's fully vaxxed and boosted as well. But still, this is a broadcast emergency. TV is down a Jimmy. <laughs> Which is why right now, as the host of The Late Show, I am calling on President Biden to open America's strategic Jimmy reserve. <laughs> Carter, <laughs> Buffett. <laughs> yeah. J.J. Walker, Jimmy Neutron, Neutron, Neutron uh, Cliff. Jimmy Smith. Of course, I'm on the East Jimmy Coast. Jimmy's in L.A. There's no way I could have given it to him. And yes, last week, I did lick a lot of things and FedEx them to his office. <laughs> but I only paid for two days, okay? <laughs> Gotta be sterile by the time he opens it. Anyway, feel better, my dear friend Jimmy. Anyway, a lot happened last week. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? Sure. Anyway, a lot happened last week that I want to catch up on, starting with the text messages the January 6th committee has gotten from former White House Chief of Staff and Hamlet who forgot York skull. <laughs> Mark Meadows. Last December, Meadows turned over evidence to the January 6th committee about his communications between Election Day and Joe Biden's inauguration. Well, last week, some of that evidence was leaked, and CNN obtained 2,319 text messages. That's a lot of messages. Luckily, Meadows has T-Mobile's unlimited talk and treason plan. <laughs> the text, there you go. I Eventually. Mean, you can just do it forever. Unlimited. Yeah, you can just go on forever, huh? The texts demonstrate how Meadows played a key role in the attempts to stop Biden's certification on January 6th. There are damning texts from a variety of political media figures, including Fox News host and man waiting for you to look away so he can eat your hamster. Sean Hannity. On election day, Sean asked Meadows where the campaign needed him to encourage voters to head to the polls. Meadows replied, stress every vote matters. Get out and vote. To which Hannity replied, yes, sir, on it. That is a shocking level of toadyism, even for a guy who looks like a bullfrog. <laughs> but he's just living up to the Fox News slogan, we report, you decide what we should say, and by the way, your boot tastes delicious today, Mr. President. <laughs> this kind... Boot. Uh, the boot. Boot. The boot. Good looking boots. The boot. Good looking boots. This kind of loyalty is not unprecedented. We all remember Walter Cronkite's famous sign off. And that's the way it is. All hail Supreme Leader Gerald Ford. Obey. We must obey. <laughs> On Friday. Was it Friday? On Friday. On Friday, Hannity tried to claim he wasn't caught. He meant to have no ethics. I don't claim to be a journalist. I claim to be a talk show host. I am a registered conservative. Yes, I voted for Donald Trump. I make, I, I make no apologies. I give my opinion straightforward. We even do culture. We do sports. We do, I'm like the whole newspaper. Yes. <laughs> Sean Hannity is just like a newspaper. Out of date, bad for the planet, and only relevant to people over 70, and I'd love to see a puppy poop on him. <laughs> puppy poop. I'd love to see a puppy poop. A puppy poop. A puppy to poop. Go, go. Wasn't just Hannity. Meadows also texted the GOP lawmakers who are collaborating to overturn a free and fair election, like Arizona representative and kid dressed by his mom for picture day, Andy Biggs. <laughs> the day before Biden's victory was called, Biggs tested Meadows a plan to, quote, encourage the state legislatures to appoint a look doors in the various states where there's been shenanigans. A look doors. If you think that a look dumb 
you're right, but <laughs> some very charitable people have speculated that that is possibly a typo for electors. <laughs> well, he is either a more run <laughs> or a trait door. <laughs> Another text came. You gotta say it slowly. Yeah, yeah you gotta you say it slowly and enough. And it connects. Mm -hmm, it connects. Another text came from former Energy Secretary Rick Perry, who said, We have the data-driven program that can clearly show where the fraud was committed. This is the silver bullet. Perry denied he ever sent this text. But last week, we learned that he had signed this text, Rick Perry, <laughs> including his number. Why are these guys so bad at committing crimes? It's like if the Zodiac Killer released a note that said, this is the Zodiac speaking to unearth my identity, solve the enclosed cipher, and return to John Evans, 1414 <laughs> Hawthorne Lane. Good luck. Meadows. <laughs> la, 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 la. Meadows also received some uh, pretty dumb texts from Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, seen here guessing how many three is. <laughs> I don't know. That's a fun one. That's a fun one. Almost two weeks after the Capitol riot, Green texted Meadows, in our private chat with only members, several are saying the only way to save our republic is for the former president to call for martial law. First of all, that's a coup. Second of all, that's not how you spell martial. Martial law is spelled like this and means normal law is suspended in favor of military government. Whereas martial law states that if TJ Maxx doesn't have it. <laughs> Marshalls definitely will at our yellow tag clearance event. Remember our motto, the loose underwear bin is next to the cutting boards. That's right on. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's my Marshalls. Right. Oh, yeah. Get a nice suit. Oh. Green, uh, believe it or not, is up for re-election this year, but a group of voters is suing to knock her off the ballot, citing the 14th Amendment, which is designed to block anyone who has, quote, engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the United States. Yeah. That's simple. That's not complicated. Yeah, it turns out people who try to destroy the government shouldn't be in the government. It's the same reason the physician treating your diabetes shouldn't be Dr. Pepper. <laughs> over, uh, mm. over in Ukraine, as Russia's attacks continue, more world leaders are showing support by visiting Kyiv. Like this weekend, when a delegation led by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi traveled to Ukraine, the trip was completely unannounced. Just what everyone wants. An unexpected visit from Grandma. <laughs> Well, I was in the neighborhood. You never call anymore. I don't know what you're up to. You're clearly not dusting. <laughs> Some A-listers aren't going to Ukraine, but are still finding ways to help from afar, like actor Benedict Cumberbatch, who is opening his UK home to Ukrainian refugees. Good for him. Good for good man. You can see it all unfold in the new Marvel movie, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Guest Rooms. <laughs> he has to cook breakfast in every dimension. <laughs> Even Ukrainians who aren't on the front lines are finding ways to stick it to Russia because a volunteer army of tech experts are hacking Russia at an unprecedented scale. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Pretty impressive, though. Although, it is easier to hack Russia than you'd think. Every one of their captures is potato. <laughs> These... <laughs> These hacks are a big deal because they've upended the myth of Russian cyber superiority with the attacks being seen as the symbolic pantsing of Putin. <laughs> oh, no! The pants are all he has left! <laughs> These... He doesn't wear a... Yeah, he got he him does, out. He does, he does, you're gonna it put it out, out there. You're gonna share it yeah. with the world. Staying overseas, there's a bit of a sticky wicket across the pond concerning House of Commons member and People Magazine's sexiest vicar alive, <laughs> Neil Parrish. Parrish was forced to resign this weekend after he admitted to watching porn in the House of Commons. <laughs> it could have been on any of the top British porn sites. Mash and Bangers, <laughs> Spotted Dick, or Beef Eaters. Here's what happened. 
Parrish claims it all started as an accident, saying he was mistakenly directed to porn while looking at tractors. <laughs> makes total sense. Anyone who's seen Thomas the Tank Engine knows that tractors are ready to plow. <laughs> Specifically, definitely got the cold. Definitely. Specifically, the MP says he accidentally landed on porn after he searched for a type of tractor called a Dominator Combine Harvester. <laughs> that is weird, because this afternoon, when I typed in Dominator Combine Harvester into Google, all I got was news about a British MP looking at porn. <laughs> so, okay. Just... Just your average horny farm equipment whoops a daisy. <laughs> Except that Mr. Parrish apparently bookmarked the site to revisit. <laughs> he bookmarked it? Is this his first porn rodeo? <laughs> oh, I better make a record of this site. Not sure if there's anywhere else on the internet to see sex. <laughs> anyway, we wish him well. It's a mistake anyone could make, especially if they're searching for tractors on Cornhub. <laughs> We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are John Bernthal and Alton Brown. But when we come back, I answer your children's questions. <laughs>